Okay, so we're going to try this. This is my first time ever live broadcasting something on YouTube. Um, so I don't know who's ever even going to see this. But tonight for patties, I'm going to show you how I make a flat cap. And I'm just going to go over a little bit about them here. There's uh, you know different styles of flat caps, but my ones that I always make are eight panel flat caps. It's literally made of eight equal size pieces that fit around. There's other styles too. This is one that's not complete, but this is an ivy. As you see, it's a one piece top. These that are literally the same size. And this is the half for the peak. And uh, essentially, you, know, you just fold the fabric over, you put it on there and you cut out one half. Of course, you don't cut the fold seam and notch it so you can line it up. That's it. It's just two patterns. It's that simple. It's not a lot of stitches. The lining can be done in any number of ways. You can make an inside out version of it, or you can uh, just do how I do it, which is basically a band around the inside with a flat top. It's big enough to fill out the hat. Um, but I'll show you, you know, there's, and there's different ways you can do them. You don't, if you find a pattern like this, it's easy to make one. Um, I'll actually explain how you can fit it to your head. But I mean, you can make the bills more squared, like uh, this one here. This one has a much more squared off bill. This is what I call my golfing hat. It's a nice flat style cap. The one that I was just wearing is like my daily one that I always wear. But as you can see, this one fits a little bit tighter. It's an eight panel as well with a button, but it's got a lot of coverage. Keeps the light out really well. Long, a little bit longer bill. So as you see, it comes back a little bit farther. But I have a uh, I described this as my summer cap. This one was a little bit of an experiment. It has leather on the inside, no button, and it's only six panels actually. Um, a little bit tighter fitting when you talk about six panels, they actually fit really tight. And you see it's a very long bill, but that's really meant for summer wear. You know, it's a, a picnic hat, if you will. And then this is my work hat. This is one of the first ones I ever made. This is actually made of a tweed with a uh, houndstooth pattern in it, as you can see. And I wear, I wear this to work. When I, prior to my little knee injury that I had recently, um, you know, I work in the stained glass art studio and that includes uh, a lot of metal and wood fabrication, not just glass and lead. Also it means going on site and working on churches, oftentimes houses and whatnot. So as you see, there's, I mean, there's paint on it, it gets dirty, it gets worn, but this is my uh, go-to hat for work. A lot of people just wear these as a fashion statement, but really they are a common working man's hat, or at least they were. If you look up pictures, for instance, the men who built the skyscrapers in New York City, you'll see all the almost all those guys sitting on those up on that iron is wearing a flat cap of one sort or another. So back to my daily cap here. This is my favorite by far. I just like the way it fits. I like the way it feels. It's full. It's warm on a cold day and it's not too hot on a warm day like we have here. Um, you see, it's a little bit messy here. So I'm also getting messages of people who are watching too. So friends of mine. So. But, so, so I showed you the patterns, basic pattern. And I'm going to explain here actually how you can adjust patterns. If you find one online, simplest way, you, know, you take your measuring tape, you measure around your head right about where it'll sit right above your eyebrows. You take that measurement, you divide it by eight, and you add half an inch. And that's how you get your width for this portion of your pattern, about a half an inch up from the bottom. You can do a quarter to a half an inch up. It all depends on where you want your seams to be. But you add a half an inch to the sides, so you got a quarter inch seam on each side of it. And that's it. So this here times eight plus a half inch on each piece is equal to the circumference of my head, which well, mine is about 22 and a quarter inches. Let's do it at 22 and it comes out all right. So those are the patterns. And you know, you don't need much to do it. You can do it by hand. It'll take longer, of course. This is this is an old, obviously an old singer, Sephora 1M. It's made in Monza, Italy. Uh, so you don't need anything fancy to do it. It's very straight seams. Um, now, the inside of my peaks, I line them with leather. You can use cardboard. You could use other pieces of fabric and layer it up. You can stuff it with cotton, whatever you want. 
Um, doesn't matter. Some of them are very soft and flexible. I like mine to be very flexible and not take a fold, so I use leather. And it works really well. It's not too expensive. So I do a lot of leather crafts too. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of what else. You can get these little snap buttons. You can buy them at craft stores or the sewing stores, Joann's, whatever, fabric stores. And you use the same material, just fits over it and the back snaps in. And that's something you'll need as well. Um, for the lining, I actually usually just buy cotton handkerchiefs and I cut them up in the sizes I need. And of course, you got your pieces for your peak and your eight pieces for the cap. And again, this usually goes pretty quick. I'm going to stop here and there. I'm going to see how this goes. I can't use my right foot very well for controlling the machine like I normally would because my injury is on my right knee on that on that right side. So I can't really do much with that. So we're going to try this left footed and we're going to see how this works. Now, this particular material is a black and kind of goldish brown, small, small herringbone pattern. That actually came from an old sport coat. If you find old sport coats in various tweed patterns, you can find some really nice ones. My favorite is Donegal tweed, but I can't find a sport jacket that doesn't fit me that's in Donegal tweed. The only one I have fits me, and I'm not going to cut it up to make a hat out of it. So, so we're going to go ahead and start on this and see where we can go with it here. There's an inside and out to these things. Everything is sewn inside out on these hats. It's that simple. Um, if you're not confident in how uh, everything holds together, by the way, let's use simple pins. It'll hold everything together for you. It'll line everything up. Which if you're not experienced in using a machine, that might be a good idea, just because it uh, helps keep stuff from sliding around. You know, it doesn't take very long. It's an extra little step, but not uh, terribly bad. Um, again, the... Uh, you know, while I'm doing this, I'll just explain what machine I'm using. This is a, a, a Singer 401M. It was built in about 1941 or 1942 in Monza, Italy. It is a tailor's machine. The light in it is out right now, and I haven't replaced it yet. Sorry. So don't recommend not or using a sewing machine without a light in it. It can be a little, a little painful if you're not careful. Um, I've never got myself in the finger with any sewing machine. Hopefully tonight's not the night. Um, again, this is all just kind of in honor of St. Patrick's. By the way, this is brought to you by Tyrconnell. It's great stuff. Don't drink and sew. You might impale your finger. So again, most everything I design is with a quarter inch seam. It's not a very big seam. It doesn't need to be, though. It helps keep out extra fabric so it doesn't fill stuff up. Another thing I'd like to talk about on a lot of flat caps you see as you see in the side profile of mine, it comes down a little bit. You see a lot of them that are really puffed up. And what they actually do is they use batting and they'll stuff it in there to give it a fuller body look. Don't do that. They were never originally made like that. It looks stupid. You can see them from a mile away, especially on the Ivy style one pieces. You can see those for forever. Horrible. And you know, like companies like Kangle and stuff, don't ever buy anything that's either filled with batting or has a logo on the outside. Unless they're paying you 10000 a year to wear their logo, don't wear their logo. All right, so here we go. I'm going to do a quarter inch seam all the way around this peak. You see me do that. This is a really cool old machine, but it is very, very old in that it takes a little bit of practice. That's to do a lock stitch on it. Part of the great thing about this machine is when I talk about using leather inside my peaks, I uh, need something that's strong enough to sew through about an eighth inch piece of leather. And this machine can do it. Sometimes you might hear it lug down when I do it, but it'll get through it. Um, it might take a little bit of persuasion. You might have to hand do some of the stitching, but uh, that's also another critical thing when you're making the peak. Um, 
and you're making it and you turn it inside out, if you don't do at least one kind of stitch around the middle of it here to hold the fabric to whatever lining you're using, when you do it, it'll tent up and the fabric will sit kind of like that. And it'll be flat across here. And you don't want that. So just like on a baseball cap, you have multiple rows of stitching. Like this one actually has a couple rows. You can almost see it right there. You want to be able to do that. So if you don't have a machine that can sew through leather, don't use leather. You can always just use other layers of fabric. You can use linen as well. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. I just like to cut it a little close, just on the curve part, get it a little close to the stitch. And that way it doesn't bunch up too much in the corners. Because if you get inside a corner, when you turn something inside out, it will bunch up and it will look funny. So now another thing I'm not doing tonight that you should do, you don't have to. I've done it on them before where you don't do it is ironing all the seams flat. And you're not going to see me do that tonight. I have done it before. Not a big deal either way. Oh, and we actually missed uh, that one got too close on that side. So we're gonna actually have to put in another stitch on that. It's not a big deal. That actually happened before I cut it. One of the pieces had a little bit tighter of radius there. Not a big deal. Small mistake, but again, doesn't matter. Each hat's gonna be a little different. You can make them any way you want to. Don't ever tell any or let anybody else tell you how to exactly to make it. It doesn't have to be made exactly any way or worn exactly any way. Don't ever listen to them. So onward, put that lining piece in there to give it some body and stiffening. It goes all the way up to the front and it'll push that seam out. Again, you can iron flat if you want, you don't have to. Now we're gonna run it, we're gonna run stitch right where this leather ends. It's about a half an inch in. And we're going to keep our, we have these little notches here. You saw in the pattern, you cut it out. And that's important for later when you're lining stuff up. So this stitch doesn't have to really be a locking stitch. It's just kind of holding it in there. To Just, just there to really let us know what's there. Not a big deal. Okay, now we're going to run again and stitch it around here just to kind of hold it in so it doesn't uh, tent up on us here. great things about this older machine. I mean, everything in here is iron or steel. It works really, really damn well. And I'm just clipping off some of the excess, so it's not so much to deal with. So there's your peak. And as you see, this one's got kind of a squarish feel to it. That's it. So that's the first piece down. Now we're going to go ahead and sew up these eight. And these will take a little bit of time. Um, Again, usually you do have an inside and outside on a fabric, so be very aware of it. Put outside to outside. I'm going to show you one of the ways that I do this. So you can sew from either end. Um, if you can get from the point end, that would be best because you can run the stitch all the way off the side. If you leave too much here, you get this weird effect, and i show you one of the mistakes here. This is actually not terribly uncommon where the... Uh, back of it, as you see, kind of curls out instead of in and sits flush. And that happens when you don't have the stitch all the way down there. So we're going to run it all the way down here. And again, this is just a quarter inch seam. Run a little off. Now 
Now, none of your patterns because they're not cut with a like a pattern cutting device. If you look at some of the videos of factory made flat caps, you don't have a die to cut these out. These are all hand cut. They're not all going to be exactly the same. That's fine. Your cap, it can be made any way you want. I don't have as much control over the speed with the left foot. I've only done it once before. It, wasn't, it didn't turn out so great. And as you see, I mean, that's just it. It's two pieces together. All right. And you can usually fold the seam or uh, iron the seam flat. And uh, one of the things you can do with that, if you iron the seam flat, instead of just having that inside stitch, you can actually add a double seam stitch down either side and it'll hold it even flatter. Now that allows the panels to flatten out with one another. But one thing it doesn't do is it doesn't add a lot of body to it. It'll actually kind of make it sit a little more flush. Just another option for you if you want. So this one, of course, like I said, we're not going to be ironing these flat. We're just going to go through and we're going to make this thing as it is. And that's all there is to it. Again, quarter inch seam. I'm going to show you too how you can adjust it. When you get to the last two or the last seam, you can adjust it down to fit. You. This is where pinning stuff is. If you're not experienced with using a machine, pinning stuff together is very, very important. Um, you won't see me do that often just because I've done this a lot. I've made a lot of different things. I mean, I've just give you a little bit of history. My mom taught me how to use a sewing machine when I was pretty young. So don't often use pins. And it's not a big deal to use them if you know what you're doing again. But if you don't, don't be afraid to use them. Just make sure they don't get caught on the foot. You know, it's fine. But uh, yeah, if you don't use them, though, sometimes you got to stop and make sure that everything's adjusted. Because again, these patterns aren't exactly the same once you cut each piece out. They all come out a little bit different, and that's fine. ways your head's not perfectly round or anything so just do what you got to do to make it work right and uh you know for people who want like a perfect one when you think of like tangle caps or you think of some of the other brands i keep dropping their name because that's a very popular one you can find them at like kng outlets and stuff like that very popular hats and I mean, they're okay hats, but again, I don't want to buy anything that has a logo on the outside of it. But uh, a lot of people want perfect looking caps, but the fact of the matter is, again, these are working class hats. These were worn by men who worked. Yeah. It doesn't have to look perfect. It's not necessarily a style statement. And even then, you look at this one, how lopsided it is. There was one time I was just standing out in the cold waiting at a car lot, and a salesman just walked by me, just ran and said, that's a nice hat doesn't have to be perfect it doesn't ever have to be and in fact the less perfect it is the more attention it gets so take that take note of that it's always like fashion rules follow the fashion rules until you know what you're doing then you can break them well break this one we're getting a little off here A little bit at the top, which is fine. 
The next one will kind of hold it over. You can see me go fl flipping it back and forth. What I'm doing is I'm doing a lock stitch. If you don't know what that is, basically it just stitches back over itself so it doesn't come undone. Um, that's pretty basic with any sewing machine. Um, it's just a simple, fast way to make sure it doesn't, the seams don't come undone. I see me reach over here, always keep a plastic bag nearby just for garbage. And see, as you see, we got one, two, three, four, five. So we're over halfway there. Again, this one's not even ironed out. Don't need to. And this one's going to come out just fine. Hopefully. Sometimes they don't. It's weird. Sometimes it's, sometimes you just mess up one little thing and it doesn't come out right. But that's all right. You know, again, your hat, your way. If it doesn't come out right and it's the only one you got and you don't have material to make more, just wear it. And I bet people still like it, especially when they say, that's a nice hat. And you say, oh, thanks. I made it myself. Always feels great. Oops. Not the needle, by the way. There's the little adjustment knob or the tension knob to hold the needle in there. Often hates me because I get close to it, but always shocks me because it's right there by the needle. And just cut all your tack ends off and toss them. So we're moving right along. Oops. Now the reason, like I mentioned, some of the, this is comes from an old sport coat that I just picked up at, uh, at like a Goodwill or a Value Village or something like that. It might have been a Carm, whatever's near here. Um, those have some of the best tweeds. If you find a good one that actually has like an Irish or, uh, you know, like a Harris tweed, if you really want to go expensive, but uh, you find those and they're great. You can use suiting from a fabric store. This one again is made of suiting. It's a little light, so you sometimes have to fill, you know, put a um, interfacing on it or something, or just something to make it a little bit fuller. These are actually a stretch knit fabric that's uh, more synthetic, but they're just really versatile. Um, flannels are great for it as well. You can buy flannels again. My other two, these two, like the summer and golf cap, are flannels that I just bought at uh, at a Joann's fabric store. You know, but these heavyweight sport coat tweeds are still the best in my opinion. They're just really nice. It's quality handmade stuff, you know. That's why those sport coats aren't cheap. And uh, when you find them in thrift stores, when you find ones that fit you, you buy them. When you find ones that are nice that you don't that don't fit you, go ahead and buy them and turn them into a hat. It's a, or sell them to someone who they will fit. You know?
But hell, if you're strapped for cash, you know, I mean, handmade handmade flat caps can be anywhere from sixty to a hundred dollars or more, depending on again on the material. If you get a, a Harris Tweed eight panel like this from a, like a nice English or Irish company that makes them completely by hand, you know, that's not a cheap hat to have. So if you're strapped for cash and you can't, you know, maybe you don't even want to spend thirty five dollars on a flat cap like a Kangol or something or however much they cost now, who knows. You know, you can buy flannel material, or like the other ones that I got, for dirt cheap, or you can use an old flannel shirt if you really want to get creative. This right here, $14 for, I think this was double, bed sheets, flannel bed sheets at Walmart. I could probably make three dozen caps out of this. $14, and it's flannel, it's cotton flannel, it's great. There's always a way. And if you don't have a machine, you can always hand sew these. It's not hard to do quarter inch stitches and learn how to do it. It's, you know, there's the various ways to do it. There's always a way. And if you're never sure, you can always ask someone or just look it up online. You have a world of information. It's all out there. You can even find patterns for this. There's uh, various patterns for ivy style or eight panels, six panels, just whatever you want to do, you know. Or again, you can make your own. It's not that. It's really not that hard. It just takes a little bit of effort and some measuring, you know. I've had to, till I found a pattern or basic pattern that I liked for myself. It took me a few tries. It took me a few tries to get down. Um, surprisingly, this one, my work cap turned out really well, and I just really like it, and it fits well for work. It's not too big. Um, fits nice. You know, some days it gets in the way, but most days it works out really nice. Um, but those pictures of me out there on my Instagram, on my flat cap Instagram that I have, O'Brien Handmade, of me wearing that hat where I'm using a plasma cutter in the shop, you know, again. Not afraid to wear these hats around and work them. That being said, I'm not afraid to wear these with a blazer or a suit either. Okay, now we're getting to the point where we need to start thinking about fitting. Again, not ironing the seams on this one. I'm just going to let this one lay as it is. Now we have one last seam to sew up. And now here comes the problem. So it may not fit right. So if I put pins in this at a quarter inch seam, like everything else has been doing, we're going to see how tight or loose it fits. So let's go ahead and do that here. Have to worry about stabbing yourself. You won't stab yourself with these damn things when you test it on or test fit it. You might. Doesn't hurt that bad though. Don't worry. Friend just shared a video on Facebook. Okay. Ooh, hey, maybe I should do that. Let's take a break for a second and see what we can do here. Huh? Let's see. Oh, hey, there's a Facebook notification. Actually, I've been getting a few of them.
All right, so we're going to continue on with this. Now, funny thing, a coworker of mine, he uh, watches that show, Peaky Blinders, and I've seen it. It's a good show. I like it because it's a crime drama. It reminds me of Sopranos, except it's a little closer to home for me. Um, I don't elaborate on that too much, but uh, it's a good show. It's fun, and, you know, it's bringing the flat caps definitely back in the style, uh, which is always cool. But uh, he actually had a friend who said he wanted me to make him one, and he wanted to put a magnet in the peak so they could mount a razor to it. You know, if you want to put a razor in a hat, just be aware that you are carrying a weapon. Don't try and wear it through a damn airport or anything like that. But uh, I wouldn't recommend it. Just carry a knife. So let's see here. Oh, look at that. It almost already looks like it's fitting perfectly. And in fact, that fit at a quarter inch seam this time is perfect. That doesn't often happen. So, we'll go ahead and we'll take these pins out. And uh, here's one of the most critical things, because this is most likely going to be the back seam. I mean, it just kind of turns out that way every time. But uh, you want to make sure, I'll show you a little trick here, how to avoid how I was talking earlier about how sometimes the lip of these, that, you know, will uh, kind of curl up or it'll sit flat. Well, the way to keep it from curling up when you run your stitch, instead of following that seam or that edge perfectly, curve it in just a little bit more, and that'll help kind of curl everything in there. So. Now you notice, like on the six panel one, it doesn't have a button on the top. IVs don't, six panels usually don't. Eight panels on the front. And you hear different versions of these. Sometimes people call them Gatsby's or Duffers or Newsboy caps, or driver caps. Um, someone said to me yesterday when I was at the Irish Fest downtown in Knoxville, it's called an English driver cap. Well, I don't drive the English around, they can drive themselves. <laughs> Nothing against the English people. I love the English people. I think they're great people. The government can suck it, though. It's just personal opinion. Look at that. It almost even looks right just as it is. It doesn't even need a peek on it, does it? Look at that. All right. So, the next bit we're going to do figure out where we want the back and front to be. We want that to be the front. So we're going to take our peak again, outside to outside. That little notch that we cut earlier is from the pattern. That's going to go right on one of the seams. And uh, the way I do it, it kind of ends up on the next seam over, as you see, on the next panel over. It just goes one panel wide. Um, and it's about a half inch seam allowance on that one, whereas most everything else is quarter. It's going to be half. And that really does just follow that uh, temporary seam that we have on there, too, that we didn't uh, backstitch. And you can follow that same stitch. So make sure you don't curl it in under there. A lot of people associate these caps with Irish and in particular American Irish. It's real popular. Um, a lot of Irishmen do wear them. Um, a lot of Italians wear them too, though. Um, you know, 
on the island of Sicily, I've even heard that uh, wearing one of these caps basically automatically associates you with the, the mafia there, because that's they're synonymous with that. Look at that. We're almost even there, just as it is. All right, so what we're going to do next, I'll put the button on, because you want it on. You don't want it sewn into the lining if you can avoid it. So that is hand sewn on. Buttons are almost always hand sewn on. It's very, I mean, there's some machines that'll do button sewing, but you don't want to do that. So just take the good length of thread, a little more than a foot long, and I'll show you exactly how I do this. So I take the two ends, and you got to use a pretty good eye side needle. Sized eye needle, something like that. I don't know. Maybe I need another drink. So you put the two tag ends through, pull them through, loose ends, tag ends, whatever you want to call them. And you keep the loop end down there. Coming through the top, wherever you want it to start. Pull it through. A little bit tougher, and you leave that loop in there. Go through your loop on your button, and through the loop end there. Pull it tight, relatively tight. Then you can just keep going through, through the hat, so you get about six to eight threads worth. Six to eight will work just fine. Don't need anything more than that. Now, some people are going to dispute how I do my buttons, which is fine. I don't really care. There's different methods. This is the method I've been using. I've been using this on hats, sport coats, shirts, basically the same system for years. And I have yet to have a button just fall off from wear, normal wear and tear. Um, Whereas like factory buttons, shit, those will fall off just by you, just by you buttoning them up. You know, that happens. Um, you know, that happens. It sucks. Quality sucks nowadays. But when you do it by hand and you do it this way, all my sport jackets there. I mean, shit, I, I have sport jackets and suits that I take the buttons off intentionally factory buttons just so I can sew them back on and they ain't gonna come off and they don't when I do that. And there's a reason for that is because I do them tight, I do them strong. Um, almost all my sport jackets and blazers I replace the buttons on anyway. So once you do like you get six or eight, you just wrap it around a few times like 10. Then it thickens up and you just go through it. You can go through it twice if you really want to, but you don't even need to. That's it for that. That button will stay on there for years. I can guarantee it. It ain't going nowhere. Okay. So now, the next part is lining. Sewing the lining in can always be a little tricky, but again, outsides to outsides. That's the top. So what I do, what I often do, is again with this stuff, I just cut a couple lengths, a couple inches wide. You have a half inch seam allowance around the base here. You can put quarter inch, half inch, however much you want there. It doesn't really matter. Well, what I do is I'll start at the back, maybe on the sides. So I have one long piece and then one short piece. And it doesn't really matter. Um, if you got stuff long enough that'll go all the way around, sew in one piece. That's fine. But today, what we're going to do is a little more complicated of a method. But I think that's what we're going to do.
Yeah, actually, I'll show you a nice way to do it. Put the ends up, sew those ends together. Outside, of course, right? So outside to outside every time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go four panels, four panels. We're going to go yeah, two down. We're just going to go from side to side. So this seam ends up on each side. And it's that simple. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. It can be that nice and easy. And uh, I'll show you how to join them up. So instead of having to measure them, you can just build it to the individual cap. You don't have to worry about measuring it out. It doesn't have to be the exact same. These two don't have to match up exactly, which is a problem with store-bought patterns sometimes as you have that issue. Learn to read your machine, too. This one is the numbered, but it's not numbered in inches like a machine I grew up using. So it's a little bit different. So you got to learn to use it right. sure we don't go past that seam right there. Box stitch in. And you have this loose end, and that's fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come back around the other side. And this is always a little bit trickier. Most machines only measure to one side. You just kind of learn how to do it. yourself how to be ambidextrous almost. So now it's complicated. Or even more complicated. <laughs> Put your two ends together, stitch them up, just like that. It's that simple. Make sure the body of the hat is not in there when you do that. Dramatic excess here. Uh, 
We're going to take another drink, because why not? Yeah, as you see, it's about 45 minutes. When you look at factory ones, it takes them about 10 to 15 minutes to build one half. But the thing is, their linings are done in a different department, um, and everything's done from patterns and preset measurements. 100% handmade, or custom hat. It'll take a little bit longer. And even then, I've been stopping and talking for you, so it's all good, right? Again, this is where an iron would come in handy. I have one, but um, I can't really get up and down right now. I know I've mentioned it already once or twice, but uh, had a serious knee injury about a week ago. So getting up and down is just really not an option. I could have set it up so I could iron right here, but it's really inconvenient. It doesn't really matter. It isn't really needed. So here, we're getting there. We're getting there. As you can see, starting to take shape. Start to take form. See, so you get your little fold over, duck bill, sh duck bill shape. Of course, it looks like shit right now, but again, we're getting there. There's a re reason that it does that. One of the things we're going to do, when we go to finish up this lining, is you actually sew about not even a quarter of an inch. You sew the lining and the exterior of the hat together, so it creates a very thin, not even quarter inch band around it. And that helps hold everything together nicely. And turn everything in inside out here. There's a reason for that. Here's the other part of the lining. Now, this is just a big square piece, and there's actually going to be some holes, and I actually leave it open for a reason. Um, you don't need it completely sealed off. So, maybe we got a question here. Let's find out. Nope, it's Facebook notifications. Okay, this is where it gets a little complicated, especially if you've been drinking. We want this inside here. Let's find the center over here, roughly the center of it. Okay. Let's do the front first here. Okay. Again, outside pieces that are going to be seen to the outside. Now this, what you can do, you notice I'm sewing on a square piece. And again, what it'll happen is it'll leave these little envelope or corner folds in here that are open. Um, again, I leave them open. I don't seal up all four of them. There's a couple reasons for one when you turn it inside out, but for two, it also makes it easier to maintain the hat if later on. So, not a big thing. Just a little touch that I do. Nobody's ever even noticed one when I've had them handle the hats. Nobody's ever even seen that and been like, oh shit, your, your fucking lining's not sealed up. It's never happened, so don't worry about that. There's numerous reasons to do that. And again, this is just the lining. It's not even going to be seen, so just run with it. doesn't matter the seam allowance or anything. Move along. Now, the band part that goes around here that's the lining, how I determine that is I just kind of measure up however thick that needs to be, and then the top piece just bring it down even further so there's some overlap. So that way it's got some volume to it. So when it sits on your head, it doesn't sit tight because if your lining sits tight on your head, the hat's really loose. The hat actually, like, stands up in a really awkward way so you actually want bigger volume of your lining because again it's thin cotton or if you use silk or satin it's going to get pressed down and formed to your head over time so don't uh you know don't worry about that too much Again, you can really do this any way you want. You know, you can do two panels, make it even to two panels at a time, however much you want. 
as so long as you get the lining in there and again it's more voluminous than the hat itself the body of the hat itself See, I just kind of bunch it up, and there's still an opening in there. Again, that's actually kind of critical. You know, it goes all the way to the inside. You'll see why. That way you don't have to worry about any type of weird seams, too, on the inside of the hat when you're trying to uh, seal it up, so to speak. Threads on that long, it don't matter. Who cares? We've got to turn it inside out anyway, right? So we got those envelope folds that I was talking about. You can literally just reach in there, grab the peak bill, as we call it here in the US. It's a peak. Just turn it inside out. I'm making too small. It kind of reminds me of an Ace Ventura 2 when nature calls with the rhino birth. Seen that, you know what I'm talking about. And Knoxville Irish Society, they found out that I make these caps and I live here in Knoxville, Tennessee, and uh, they actually want me to do a workshop on these. So we're going to do something like that, I think. You still got to wait to hear from them, but we'll see. Again, there's a button, there's a peak, there's your hat. Shit, you could even leave it like this if you like. I know ladies' uh, newsboy caps in the 70s were often like this. I made a friend of mine one like this for his birthday recently. I made a paisley corduroy. It's sweet looking. Uh, actually, it was this material right here. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Had uh, some paisley cotton lining. That was pretty slick looking. You can even make a conductor's cap if you want. Okay, so we're just about there. Again, now we're going to do the sew down where you get the uh, the exterior and the lining all together. So I have hair in my face here. There we go. I'm going to start at the front on this one. Well, off to the side of the peak, actually. Fabric will get a little thick, and that's going to happen. You just got to learn to deal with it. Adjust your machine if you can. Oops, I keep going on your adjustment for my stitch length. Now, when you're talking about less than a quarter inch seam on this particular machine, a quarter inch goes all the way to the edge of the foot, and then you got your uh, three eighths, half inch measurements on here, which is the three and four. A lot of them will come with standard measurements now. This one just has some measurements that you just kind of have to learn. 
but you'll learn that for less than quarter inch stitches or seam allowances, um, you can use different parts of the foot as kind of a reference. And that's what I'm doing here. I can't get a close up of it, but there's uh, these two fingers on the foot and basically they kind of curve in like this. And I'm just using that middle as a reference to do this. And that's less than a quarter inch, it's about three sixteenths. <laughs> That's about where I run those seams around the edge. They're just nice, tight, unobtrusive looking. And they work for me. They work for those who wear my hats. Okay. And you can do it a half inch up if you like. If you want to really almost noticeable band around here again mine's only like three sixteenths of an inch if you want a half inch and you want it to be noticeable almost like a greek fisherman's cap go for it again don't let me tell you how to make your cap i'm showing you how i do it but don't ever let anybody else tell you that it's the wrong way or the right way you make it whatever way you want because it's your cap if you want me to make you one, I'll make you one. If you want certain things like that, you just let me know. You can tell me to make it how I make it, or if you want something done, you can do it. If you go to my website, obrienhandmade.wix.com slash home, you can order them from there. They are expensive, I'm not going to lie, but again, I make them by hand, and I'm the only one here. I make them in my apartment. <laughs> yeah. I bring a lot of years of sewing experience. You know, in some of my experience, I've made some of my own clothing. I adjust all my own uh, sport coats, blazers. I adjust them myself, um, make my own hats. In the past, I used to make uh, tactical gear out of cordura nylon, even using machines. And that stuff's actually kind of tough to sew, but I did it. I used to make plate carriers and uh, vests like that for tactical stuff. Um, so I, and it all worked i still have a lot of it in, st in fact a lot of my prototyping stuff um and i still sometimes use it occasionally I'm not too into that but you know it is what it is and i got it um so i've got a lot of sewing experience oh there was one gun store in washington state when they saw me walk in with this hoodie that i made a, a tactical hoodie now I look back and like, God, why did I wear that thing in public? They wanted me to start producing them for them, but they didn't want to give me a big enough of a cut for how long it takes to make something like that, to make it worth my while. So it's a handmade item. They wanted to sell it at like Chinese factory prices. Fuck that. There, they did almost the thing that you see always happen with musicians is uh, you'll get exposure for it. Yeah, exposure don't pay the bills. Sorry. Money talks and bullshit walks. Now, when you go to do that scene, you do it under the peak. You don't do it over the top, otherwise it just doesn't work. <laughs> so, you don't need to do it actually at all around there. <laughs> Let's try it on this one back. We'll just go with that. Let's see. I've never actually done it without it. Normally I go all the way around. Let's see how it works. Oh, yeah, we're getting there. Uh, I may have to do some sort of stitching in there just to hold it up. Maybe. We'll see. Let's see what we can do here. Yeah, we'll run one across the top here, just for the hell of it, maybe. Yeah, we're gonna need to. A little experimenting that didn't work out on this particular one. I know it did work out on one of the last ones. But it's apparently not this one. Maybe it's just this particular tweet. It doesn't like it. We'll just run a small seam all the way up across it.
not even going to lock stitch it because there's lock stitch in those eye and around. Now, when you go to attach, you know, a lot of production ones are buttoned down. And uh, they are snap down, what they call them. And they have a little snap here and you just pop them down. Nah, we don't do that. You've seen some that are sewn all the way across the front. I just like to do three stitches, one in the center and one on the sides to hold it down. I think that's just the coolest way. I think it looks good that way. It's not over complicated. You know, it's, it's simple. It's nice. And it's also, if one of them happens to break or come undone, it's easy to fix. It's not a bitch. I don't have to redo the whole damn thing. Uh, let's just give this thing a go. I mean, we're almost there. We're right there. So. This one, I think I'm going to put the body of the cap back. So right up to the edge of the peak, like I usually do. I'm going to set it back. We're going to set it back about a half an inch so you can see that uh, nice square peak we got on there. Something like that. It might be close. And we're not ironing this one either, so it doesn't develop seams like you think. So. When you don't iron them, it takes them a little bit of time to wear in, fall down. But look at that. Look at that. See, we got it's uneven. It'll even it out when I actually sew it. It'll come down to right about there. But look at that. Shit. We just made a flat cap. We've been on here about an hour in actual work time, probably only about 30 minutes. And look at that. 30 minutes. 30 minutes. And that's not counting cutting out the patterns. That only takes about 30 minutes in itself. Well, shit. You got an hour, you got an old flannel shirt or two, you can make a flat cap. That's all it takes. It doesn't take much more than that. You know, I'm a firm believer in just uh, personal philosophy. There's nothing that man has done that you can't do yourself. It was at one time done with the hands of man, you can do it yourself. Don't ever let anybody tell you, oh, you got to buy something. That's bullshit. Yeah, buying stuff's nice, but there's better ways out there. All right. So now... We're going to sew this down. This is actually pretty easy. If you have curved needles, like leather sewing needles, that works even better. But uh, I don't. Well, I do. But they're kind of on the other side of the apartment or by my leather and woodworking stuff. And uh, you can't just really run up and grab them right now. And I didn't really think that one out. You can use a straight needle, it's all right. But again, I'm going to sew this back about a half an inch. I just really want that, that peak to be seen. So kind of the same way you do the button. Good. Just go through the fabric like that. Leave a few inches on the end. You're going to need that. Then you just loop around. Same thing, about six to eight threads through. That's all it really takes. And all you're doing is you're reaching up inside the hat here and you're just pull, pinching it down. That's all. And you just line it up and sew it together right there. Nothing to it. Just like that. Do that a few times. Pull it tight. And you got your peak sewn down. Now, you'll notice all my threads uh, in this are gray. And uh, the reason I use this uh, medium gray thread is uh, a lot of the colors and stuff, of, especially of traditional tweeds, are have some gray to them. And uh, I just think it really works well with just about everything. Um, I've even used the gray thread on the green and blue flannel you saw. 
I made, I used that to uh, make a hat for a friend of mine who's, um, she's Irish and Scottish, so, you know, that's all right, though. Scots are good people, too, right? So, but uh, I made that hat for, uh, for her for Christmas, and I used the gray thread, and it just, you know, it doesn't stand out too much. Comes out nice, and that's all right. Okay. Now then once you pull it tight, you just go around it just like you did, you know, wrapping around the button, but you gotta thread it through back from the back here. Just go around it five, six, seven, eight times, whatever it takes, whatever you feel comfortable with, and then go through the bunch, through the bundle of it. And going through the bundle, I mean you're just literally, you know, you get a nice tight wound stack of threads and you go right through it, it won't come out. It doesn't ever come out. You don't have to do any type of knots or fancy type of locks for it. It's that simple. And again, it's how I do all my buttons. And I've been doing them like that for years. When I lived in Seattle, you know, like I said, I'm in Knoxville. I'm originally from Puyallup, Washington. When I lived in Seattle, I had to wear suits to work a lot. I adjusted all my suits all my sport coats, everything I wore in the office. And uh, oftentimes I buy older stuff just because my personal style is a little bit older. And uh, shit, I can't tell you how many times I had to replace buttons and I on uh, stuff that I bought. And every time you know, I do it this way, and I've still got a lot of those jackets. Guess how many times I've lost a button? Not once. So again, go through the bundle. Then you left that tag in. You can go through the bundle again with that too. Just go through it once with that tag end, and that'll lock up the uh, start of the stitch. I'm going to do that two more times here. Hope everybody had a good St. Patrick's Day, a good safe but fun St. Patrick's Day. Um, I know I did. I had to go out last night. I couldn't go out tonight. Um, Knoxville has an Irish festival and it's very busy and having to walk around with a cane or crutches right now is not uh, the most pleasant. So we went out last night and then uh, stayed in tonight and just kind of been drinking and celebrating here, which is fine. It's all right. But I heard uh, some interesting news. If you're interested in Irish politics, Jerry Adams and uh, Ms. McDonald and Ms. O'Neill of uh, Sinn Féin in Belfast were in New York for the, at the Friends of Sinn Féin. And uh, the mayor of New York, which I'm not the biggest fan of any mayor of New York, but is what it is, right? They uh, declared today Jerry Adams Day for the year, which was really neat. I thought that was really cool. Jerry Adams, if you don't know who he is, he's been a, don't care what anybody's personal opinions of the man are, he's been a great harbinger of peace in Northern Ireland and uh, fighting for a united Ireland. And uh, it's been a wonderful thing. And he stepped down as president of Sinn Féin this year. And I, I believe the lady's name is Mary Louise. But I know her last name is McDonald. And she is now president of Sinn Féin. And uh, vice president is, I can't remember her first name, but it's O'Neill something, I know that. Um, yeah, they were all in New York. I wish I could have gone, but no, nope, they're all crippled right now. Thank you. 
Almost done here. We only got one more set of stitches to do, and then we'll have a flat cap completed. Not sure what else to talk about in this time. I don't know how people do this. Oops, I just pulled that all the way through. Don't do that. Almost done. We're on the home stretch here. Now, again, if you uh, iron these, you can iron the seams flat. You can iron them to give sh a certain shape to the body of it, you know. Professional hat makers, they block their hats. They actually fill them with a, a wood, basically like a last, and then steam them for about 10 seconds. And you can do something similar. You know, you can take a wadded up towel and stick it in these, and I've done that. And it gives them a little more body and shape. But, you know, over time, it still falls flat and does its thing because it's a flat cap and it should do that. It's not me, you know, it's not a beaver fur felt hat so it's not going to keep that shape for forever um, and it doesn't have shellac in it or anything like that so then you don't want it to you want it to personalize over time you know these hats they don't uh, they're not meant to look like every other hat everybody's is a little different and that's the beauty of these hats no two are exactly alike. I've never made any two that are exactly alike. I'm always experimenting with bill shapes, with the peak shapes, I should say. Um, always messing with them. This is the last of this vintage-esque herringbone, small herringbone pattern that I have. But again, you know, you can fold you know when you fold the seams over on the sides you can iron them down if you want later on anything you want to do with these things so. and again over time the seams will sit a little flatter so not real real big Got your button on 
top and you got your flat cap and that's it that's all there is to it i mean that's a flat cap right there for you and this one could probably come forward more which maybe i'll do i might adjust that a little bit actually i really like this one the way it sits it's nice and full look at that that's how you make a flat cap if you got any questions feel free to email me or you can visit my site again it's o'brien handmade at dot wix.com slash home see you later have a good day